Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today, we're going to be doing a playthrough of a game that was voted on by our Patreon community called Brussels 1893. Yes, this game is designed by Etienne Espremen and published by Geek Attitude Games. And in this game, we are going to be taking on the roles of architects in Brussels. We are going to be designing and building houses, putting in art into those houses to make them nice and beautiful, and also employing the help of some nobles to maybe get that job done. Yes, this is primarily a worker placement game with some area majority qualities, and it's also primarily a Euro style game. Now today, we're gonna to be playing with the newest edition of the game that actually includes an expansion, but we are not going to be playing with the expansion, and we'll talk more about why that is during our review. And so as usual, we are going to start with a teach of the game, and then we'll go straight into our two player playthrough and end with a review. If you'd like to jump around, we'll include timestamps in the description below. Now if you can all do us a big favor and turn on your Klingon subtitles, just in case you make any mistakes, we will add those corrections there. Lastly, if you like these kind of videos and you want to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are ready to begin. So if you please direct your attention to the center of the table, we're all set up here for a two-player game of Brussels 1893. Welcome to <clears throat> Brussels. It's getting started. And so like Naveen was mentioning, in this game, we play as different architects who are trying to build out houses, we are collecting paintings and selling them, and basically just trying to score the most amount of victory points by the end of five rounds. And so the way that the game works is each round is divided into three phases, starting with the planning phase. And so at the start of each round, we're actually going to start by flipping over the top uh, stock exchange card. The game comes with several of these, and you only randomly uh, draw five of them, so we're not going to pick out one of those. But as an example, I'll just show you with one of the ones that we're not playing with. The stock exchange cards look like this, and what this does is it basically tells you what area of the worker placement board over here you're going to be allowed to place in for that round, and that's going to be dependent on player count. So because we were playing a two-player game, had we flipped over this card, we would consult the two-player section up top, and it basically gives us two coordinates, one for the row and column. And as the first player, I have this, uh, this little device. thing device here that I'm going to basically try to lay out what our active area is going to be. So in this example, the options are 3, 4, which is going to be row 3 and column 4. And when placing out this device, you have to place it so that it outlines the largest area mm -hmm. possible using that coordinate. So 3, 4 would look like this. Alternatively, I can choose to place it at 4, 3. So four, uh, row 4 is up here and column three is here. Mm -hmm. and I think the active area would still look like this, right? Yep. So those are my two options. And that is sort of the privilege of being the first player. You get to choose where everybody is going to play for that round. So by placing it like this, Monique has established that these are the 12 actions that we can take. Yes, but let's just say, for example, I did not choose that and I chose this area. Then that's it for planning. This card would actually stay face up because there is more information on that card that we'll need. Then at that point, starting with the first player, we all move into the actions phase where players will be taking turns, placing out one of their workers and taking an action until you decide to pass. Now I will mention, because we are playing a two player game, there are some changes to the gameplay that we'll probably discuss right before we start. But otherwise, when placing out your worker, you have two options for where you can place it. You can either place it in the on the Art Nouveau board mm -hmm. or on the Brussels board. Now in this game, there are five main types of actions that you can take, and they are primarily going to be found on the Art Nouveau board. But when placing out an architect on this board, you're always required to include at least one coin with it. Now, the amount of money that you decide to include is up to you, but the minimum is one. And so as an example, maybe I'll place out my worker here because you have to place out your architect on an available space that is within the active area. And each space can only hold one person's architect. The amount of money, by the way, that you decide to include is going to be important for the third phase where we calculate the column majorities. So then let's just go ahead and discuss the five different types of actions, starting with a different one, actually. Let's start with this action over here, which is the workshop action that allows you to take a piece of art from the display. Now, there are five colors of art, but the primary ones that you're allowed to take are all of the ones except for black. The black one is sort of special. And in this game, artwork will score you points at the end of the round for each different color piece you still have in your possession. And it'll also score you money and points when you go to sell it, which is the next type of action called the sales action, which is down here. Now, all the actions are actually represented by these different symbols, which are really tiny. Mm -hmm. So if you can't see it, we'll just uh, do our best to try to call them out as we take them. And so the sales action allows you to sell one piece of artwork that is in your possession. Now, at the start of the game, you can sell any color of artwork. 
But as soon as the first person sells a piece of artwork, it's actually going to go into one of these two uh, display areas over here. And from that point on, you are now no longer allowed to sell a colored artwork that is represented in one of these two spaces. So in this example, now nobody can sell blue. Now the amount of money and points that you get for that artwork is going to be dependent on where this indicator is for that artwork's color. In this example, the blue spot is corresponding to two money as well as two points. Before I actually go to sell my artwork though, I'm allowed to move this, uh, this indicator, the number of spaces equal to however many pieces of art I have in that moment. Mm -hmm. And so in this example, if I were to sell this, I have one piece of artwork, which means I could move this so that I score more points by moving it over to the left. Now I'd get two money at four points. Or if I valued uh, money more, I could move it upwards to get two points and four money. It really depends on what you need. But the indicator must always stay within this grid. And so after you move that, then you would go to sell your art piece and you'd get all your money and points for it. But we are going to just reset this sure. because we're not actually selling artwork right now. <laughs> And by the way, eventually both of these spaces are going to get filled up with art pieces. And from that point on, every time you sell a piece of art, you'll have to remove one of your choice to make room for the one that you're selling. And that's essentially it for that action. The next type of action is the nobles action, which allows us to hire the assistance of one of the available nobles. Now each player starts the game with one noble. This is a uh, Georges Brugman. And over the course of the game, you'll have the opportunity to tap these nobles and essentially gain the effects that are on their card. Now, when taking this action, you choose from one of the four available in the display, and each of them has a certain amount of money that you're required to pay, the rightmost one being free. And so in this example, if I were to, say, just take the free one, I would then gain the effect of the card immediately, which in this case would be going up my iris track. Mm -hmm. And then I would have to decide whether or not I'd like to keep the noble so that in the future I can keep on using their benefit. The caveat here, though, is for every noble that you decide to keep, at the very end of the game, you are required to pay them the amount of money that is shown on the card. And for each noble that you cannot pay, you're going to lose five points. So you have to be cautious of that. And if you decide to keep them, they actually come tapped. They will become unexhausted at the end of the round, though, so you will be able to use them again uh, in the, the next round. And these will automatically refill and slide down. And one rule to be aware of with the nobles is you can never keep two of the same in your possession. Right. You can still take the second noble and gain its effect, but you just wouldn't be allowed to keep it. And these nobles, by the way, will grant you a wide variety of effects that typically have to do with going up on one of your three tracks, which we'll explain during scoring, or gaining you more of your architect meeples that that are in the courthouse unavailable for you to use. And so at the start of the game, we each start with two of our meeples in there. And that's essentially it for that action. Now, the last two types of actions have to do with building our buildings because we are architects after all. Mm -hmm. And so this action over here that's represented by the cube is the materials action. This allows us to gain some building materials. Now, in this game, when you're not playing with the expansion, these refined materials come in the form of stone, wood, and iron. And so taking this action allows you to take basically any two of these cubes. You're going to need these materials in order to take the last type of action, which is called construction, and it is represented by this compass. And this action allows you to construct one of your six houses that are on your player board. Now, all of them are identical. Uh, only the top right-hand corner one is flipped over, just so you can keep track of the steps that you need to take when taking this action. Sure. Now, when building your houses, you always have to start from the bottom row and build upwards, because they actually cost a different amount of materials. The bottom row here only requires you to spend two materials, the middle row three and the top row four. But for each uh, house that you build in the top row, it's going to immediately score you five points each. So it would be uh, nice for you to be able to build those. Sure. Now the type of materials that you have to spend is dependent on where this compass is at the top left hand corner of the board. So it's going to be any combination of the three types of refined materials and slash or money. So there is a three coin spot there. But the one thing that you have to keep in mind is you must turn in a combination of what that is actually pointing to. So if if I were to build one of my bottom row houses here and the compass looked like that, I would be required to turn in one blue and one brown cube. Mm -hmm. If I had to turn in more than two cubes, then it is my choice what combination I want to do, but both need to be represented. We haven't really talked about the white cubes yet. Um, there will be a way for you to gain those. And if you need to, these are actually considered a wild resource. So you can substitute any resource uh, with these white cubes if you have them. Mm -hmm. 
The only thing, though, is the next step in constructing a house is if you did not use a white cube, you score five points. Right. So even though these white cubes are convenient, they cost you points. Then, before you place out your house, you are required to rotate one of the legs of this compass. Now, uh, they can never be touching and they can never overlap. Mm -hmm. So if it looked like this, then I would be required to rotate this side. Sure. And as soon as it gets to the arrow, then it rotates all the way back around. So this is always going to move every time someone constructs. So by doing that, it's going to change what you can actually use to make your own constructed uh, house. Exactly. And if the situation arose where this was pointing at that nothing spot, then that means all the building materials have to be that wood. Yes, so plan wisely. Mm -hmm. Now, once you've rotated that, the last step is you take the house that you've built and you place it out onto the board. Now, where you place it does not have to be in the active area. You can place it outside the active area, sure. but the space has to be completely empty. Now, the benefit of these houses are twofold. The first thing is in the future, if at any point an opponent places one of their architect meeples on a space that has your house, you get a passive benefit depending on what that action space is. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about those in a second. The other thing is at the end of the game, each house that you have out on the board are going to score you a number of points equal to your architect track. So these three tracks are actually a scoring criteria of sorts, except for this one, actually. Mm -hmm. yep. And so if your strategy is to just build out as many houses as possible, then you'll want to gain the benefits that allow you to progress up the architect track because it's your multiplier. Sure. And that's essentially it for the construction action. Now, just to kind of briefly go over the passive benefits for having a house out on a, an action spot, if it's on a workshop spot, then when an opponent, remember it has to be an opponent, mm -hmm. goes onto your house, you gain a black art piece. And when you sell the black art piece, you're gonna go based off of the black square that's in the center there. If it's on the sales benefit, then that gives you one victory point for each artwork that you have in your possession. Having it on the nobles action allows you to activate one of your unexhausted nobles that round. The materials action gains you one free material cube of your choice. And finally, if it is on the construction action, that scores you one victory point for each house that you've already built. Mm -hmm. But that is essentially how all of the actions work on the Art uh, Nouveau board. As for the Brussels board, this side, this area has four different action spaces, and the difference is you do not place money on that board. The first time a player takes one of these actions, it only costs uh, one architect meeple. Mm -hmm. But say if I or Naveen were to go there a second time, then you would have to place out two meeples, and so on and so forth. So you always have to place out one additional meeple than the previous player. And this change is based off player count. Yes. This is specifically for a two and three player game. Now, as for the action spaces, this first one here gains you money and the amount of money de is determined by the stock exchange card. There's a tiny, tiny uh, coin amount at the very top mm -hmm. and that's how much money you gain. The next action spot, which is this one, they all have names by the way, <laughs> I just don't remember what they are, <laughs> but this is the spot that allows you to gain the benefits of your unexhausted nobles. Now, the number of nobles that you can tap by taking one action is dependent on where you are on this track. And so at the start of the game, we will only be able to activate one noble mm -hmm. by going there. The next action space over here lets you choose one of the five basic types of actions that I just described on this board and take it. So that's a good way to take an action that you're completely blocked out of, as an example. Sure. And the last action spot over here just gains you three of these white cubes, which we already discussed is wild for constructing your buildings. Now, as tempting as it is, you are not going to want to just place out all of your architect meeples uh, on this board because as we'll discuss in the third phase, whoever's placed out the most number of architect meeples here is going to lose one to the court at the end of the round. So it is a bit of a game of chicken there. Sure. Now once you've decided that you no longer can take any turns or you just are done for the round, then you can pass. And when you pass in this game, you are out for the rest of the round. At that point, you'll gain one coin for each different colored piece of art that is in your possession. And if you are the first player to pass that round, you'll also gain the top card from this deck, which is going to gain you one coin for each of these that you have in your possession. Mm -hmm. In addition, it'll also give you an advantage for when determining first player for the next round, as you'll see. And once everyone's passed, that ends the actions phase, and then we move on to the resolutions phase, where we do a bit of scoring. During this phase, we're going to score the Art Nouveau board based off of two criteria. The first thing is we're going to score column majorities. Now, we don't have anything on the board, so we don't have a very good example, but this is basically going to be based off of how 
much money each player has contributed in each column. So let's just use this one example. Sure. The board's gonna be much more filled, obviously. For each column, the player who spent the most amount of money will gain the card at the bottom. Now, these cards do two things for you, two or three things, actually. When you gain a card, you're going to either gain its effect, which is in the center, which again has to do with typically going up on these tracks, or you can keep it for the multiplier at the bottom. And so on our player boards, we have four different scoring criteria that we're gonna score for at the end of the game. The top one here is going to be uh, one point for each architect meeple that you have in your possession, starting with the third one. Mm -hmm. The next one here is going to be one point for each noble that you have. This is one point for each artwork left over. And then this is one point for every four coins. Now, if you're doing really well in one of those categories, instead of taking the effect in the middle, you may want to keep it and tuck it under one of the scoring criteria to give yourself an extra multiplier. But the one rule is if you were to acquire several of these in the same round, you can not tuck more than one in the same scoring row. Mm -hmm. The other thing is before people make that decision, uh, once all of these are dealt out, we're actually going to count and see uh, which player has the most number of these mannequin piece symbols uh, on their cards. And that includes the two that are on the card that whoever passed first has that round. Mm -hmm. And whoever has the most number of those symbols gets the first player token for the next round. That is how we calculate first player. And that is essentially how column majorities score. The other thing that we're going to be scoring are these iris symbols. And so the way that that works is we're going to look at every grouping of four that are surrounding an iris symbol on the uh, in the active area that is completely surrounded by four architect meeples. So we're not going to be scoring these as an example. Mm -hmm. And for each completely surrounded iris, we're going to see which player has the majority of meeples around it. And that player will be able to score points based off of their iris track. In this case, it's a tie, but for this specific scoring criteria, ties are friendly. So we would both score according to our own tracks. In the previous scoring, the column majorities, in, in the case of a tie, nobody gets the card. Mm -hmm. And we're basically going to score that way for every single iris in the active area that's completely surrounded. Then once that's done, we're going to end the round by doing the Brussels majority, which is not the good type. <laughs> Whoever has the most meeples here loses one to the courtyard. And in the case of a tie, then both tied players will lose a meeple there. And that's essentially it. Once that's done, then we just clean up for the next round. All of the money will go into the bank and we play a total of five rounds. And at the end of the fifth round, we'll go into final scoring. And before we actually score everything, of course, you'll first have to pay all the nobles that you decided to keep. Yep. And again, for each one you could not pay, it's minus five victory points. You'll score victory points for each of your constructed houses, depending on your architect track. Any leftover refined materials will score you one victory point, except for the white cubes, they do not score you anything. Whichever player has the first player marker at the end of the game gets an additional five points. And finally, you'll score all four of your your scoring rows depending on your multipliers and at that point whoever has the most points wins. So that is essentially how you play the base game of Brussels. Mm -hmm. uh, now any changes that are going to be made for the two-player game we'll talk about right before we play but we're just gonna go ahead and get cleaned up and then we'll get started with our playthrough. Okay we have reset everything we are ready to go we have randomly chosen Monique as first player mm -hmm. so she will be going first. Yes and we did this because there was a bit of setup. During setup in turn order each player gains a starting uh, art piece so I chose blue sure. for no reason at all. Mm -hmm. I also start with five coins whereas Naveen gets six and specifically in a two-player game we each start with a neutral uh, player piece and so each round before we uh, start the actions phase in turn order we're going to place our piece out on a completely empty space. So it cannot contain a player's building. And for that round, no player can place their architect meeple there. So we're essentially blocking out a space each uh, for the entire game. Now, like we we're mentioning at the start of the video, we are not going to be playing with the included expansion and we'll discuss that a little bit more during the review, but we are playing with the asymmetric variant. Mm -hmm. And so what that entails is some of the boards here are flipped over to their opposite side. So you basically have to alternate and it just adds variety in the action spaces. The major thing though, is each player's uh, player mat is asymmetric. Today I'm playing as Victor Horta and basically my architect track goes up to 12 instead of the standard, I think 10, is that 10. the standard? Yeah. In addition, my special ability here is each time I go to the materials action space, I also gain two coins. Pretty good. As for me, I'll be playing as Paul Couchy. And uh, mm -hmm. my benefit here is anytime I construct or make a piece of art, I'm gonna get the corresponding refined uh, material accordingly. 
The only thing is, if I construct a green piece of art, then I will take a wild cube. Instead of the glass. Instead of the glass. Glass is an additional refined material that's only with the expansion. Mm -hmm. Now, one of your tracks is different too, right? Uh, so I think it the is noble the one? noble track. Yeah, so mine goes one, two, four, five, seven, nine. Ah, uh, mine caps at seven. At seven, yeah. So if you happen to take nine nobles that you have to pay <sighs> <Nobles>. for, <laughs> yeah. you could tap the ball. And I think that's it. Are you ready to begin? Yeah, let's do it. All right, mm -hmm. round one. Here we go, planning phase. All right. So we are going to flip over the first stock card, and we have this one here. All right. In a two-player game, it's going to be uh, row two, column four. So basically this area, yeah, although eight. I think it's like this, right? Uh, yes. Because this is the larger, larger yep. active space. Or row four and column two. Yep. So basically this or uh, this. Okay. Now I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to base my decision off of just it's yet. Pretty early. It is pretty er pretty early. There are no buildings to sort of block off. So let's just go with two four like okay. this. And the only reason being, I would like to include more of these cards okay. for the column majorities, and the other way around would have removed these two. Sure. And by the way, for this round, going to this action space will get you four coins. Yeah, it's not very good. All right. Then starting with me, we have to place out our neutral meeples to block off a space. Okay. And I think, I think I'm just gonna go with this space. Mm, little art, huh? Yeah. That's my benefit. Exactly. Over here. <laughs> right. Don't look at mine. Yeah. You know what? I don't want you to be able to construct. Okay. Nobody's constructing. No one's constructing. That is the only that's spot. That's the only one. No, that's not entirely true. If you'd like to construct, you can still you go here. Go here. Yep. Okay, so then starting with me, we're going to take our real actions. So then I'm going to go ahead and place out my architect meeple with one coin. Just one, Naveen. All right. <laughs> Up here. And if you can't see it, uh, the action symbols are really tiny. We're just going to call out the action as we take them. And this is going to be taking refined materials. So because I am Victor Horta, taking this action also gains me two coins from the supply. So I needed more money so yeah. that I can take more actions with them, I guess. Yikes. And seeing as the compass is currently pointing at blue and brown, I think I have to take one of each. One of each. Sure. Thank you. Mm. All right, that's me. So now goes to you. Okay, first action for me. I mm -hmm. think I'm going to take a noble, and I'm going to put two coins next to this one here. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, there. You want this? Possibly. So uh, the noble I'm going to take is because uh, I'm cheap right now. I'm uh -huh. going to take this free one right here. So okay. I am not going to keep them. I'm just going to use it to bump up and then get rid of the noble card itself. So I'm not going to keep this into my employee for later on. It's just going to go up once and then discard. All right. So I'll just discard this off screen. And okay. if we need to refill, we can do that then. All right. And then these slide down and yes. we have a new one. Ah. So, oh, another one. The same one. Same yeah. one. So then back to me. And basically, if I want to secure my majority in this column and get this card at the end of the round, I would have to place my architect meeple here with two coins, two coins, because right now Naveen is paying two coins and I've already paying one. Mm -hmm. So I think I should just do it. Yep. I mean, it gets me a noble. It does. Right, so that's two coins and it is the noble action. So I don't necessarily know that I care about going up on this track right now. So I think I'm just going to pay, I am gonna pay the two coins. Ooh, you're taking this one. I'm taking that one. Okay, are you gonna keep them? I think I will keep them. Okay. I don't know if this is smart. This is sort of uncharted strategic territory for me. I don't usually go nobles. Okay. So this is a little bit scary. But the benefit that this uh, noble will get me is one of my architect meeples from the courthouse. Mm -hmm. And they become and sleepy. They become exhausted. So I go. cannot reactivate them. Sure. And Ooh, that's it. This is five victory points. That's five victory there. points. All right, back to you. I think I'm going to go get some building material. So I'm going to just place one coin here. Okay. And then place my person there. What would you like? Uh, You know what? I don't know what's gonna happen, so I'm just gonna go brown and blue also. Maybe we can race to it. Brown and blue. Yeah. Oh no, okay. Well, I think you are pushing my hand here. I need to win that race okay. <laughs> because those are the materials I have. So I, uh, because there is no uh, build action on this board, I have to go here. Okay. So since I'm the first player to take this action, it only requires one architect meeple. And again, you don't put money on this board. That spot will allow me to choose one of the five types of actions to take. And I'm going to choose to build a building. Okay. So first things first, I have to pay my materials. These two buildings require only two uh, refined materials. And right now the compass is set to blue and brown. So I'm going to go ahead and pay these. Yes, you do. That's it. Because I did not use a white cube, I also gain five points. So blue will go to five. Mm -hmm. And then I have to rotate that. 
It's interesting because if I move this to the blank space, you just need to get another, you would need to get another brown cube. Just one brown. But if I move the other one over to the three space, you would just have to pay three coins. So I really don't know what you would prefer, but I think I will move this. Can you move it actually for me, please? Which one do you to, want to? To the three coin. So brown to three? Yeah. There you go. So, so now it's a combination of three coins and blue. And a blue. And finally, I place out my building. So where do I want this to go? I don't know if this is a terrible placement, but I'm just gonna place it up here. Okay. Right there, all right. Well, uh, I think I wanna encircle this because I am up on this iris track mm -hmm. and I get a benefit for taking this particular action. Oh, I debated so that spot. I'm gonna go there. Now, how much money? So you only have two coins left? Yes, correct. Two coins. Two coins. What can I get away with here? Not great. Not great at all. Okay, I will do one coin here because I am being scared and cheap. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna take the action which is gonna be making a piece of art and my mm -hmm. benefit is I get a refined cube or a uh, white cube if it's a green. So I'm gonna take the brown. Okay. Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm gonna take the, the blue actually. Oh, okay. I will take the blue. The blue? Yeah. Interesting. Blue. Even though you have blue, I'm gonna take blue because I want a blue cube. Okay. Yeah, that's another way I can just get stuff. And again, I got the blue cube because that's the kind of art I made and that is my benefit down here. Right. Well, it's back to me and I think I'm going to place out one architect meeple with two coins mm. and I'm gonna go here. Okay. So this allows me to sell a piece of art and seeing as Naveen also has blue, sure. I don't want him to sell before me or else I won't be able to sell this. So I'm selling this piece of art. Before I do so, I can move the indicator up to one space because that's the only, I only have one piece of art. Yep. So I'd want more coins or more points. You know, it's still pretty early. So I'm gonna go with coins. I'm moving it up one space upward. Okay, so you get four coins. So I get four coins and two points. So let's get the two points now. And then, oh, is this, thank you. One, two, and then I'll take three, four. Mm -hmm. All right, and then this goes up there. So now blue cannot be, sold cannot be sold until that gets bumped off. Right. Okay, back to you. Okay, seeing as you have nothing to sell, mm -hmm. I think I'm just gonna put one coin onto this space since this is your money-making action Okay. to get cubes. So I gotta do that. I will <laughs> so. say you are allowed to take an action and not actually take it. Sure. Like you can go there, yep. um, but if you can take the action, you are required to. Yeah, I, I yeah, definitely, but I don't think you're gonna take that action. Why? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you're not gonna. But okay. uh, so I'm gonna get two cubes of my choice. Now I already have two blue. Brown's gonna be a little while. This is gonna be here for a little bit. And mm -hmm. whenever we move this, this has to move because this needle cannot be touching that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna scoot ahead and take two yellow right now, knowing that eventually it's gonna get to it. Oh, okay. So then back to me and my only options are these two spaces and which require you to sell artwork and I don't have and I bluffed, I'm not going there. Yep. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pay two coins and go to this top left spot here because it'll at least secure me this card yep. and we can tie for the iris majority. Mm -hmm. So that lets me take a noble action. Now I don't really care about going up this track. Still, or do I? Maybe I do because I'll be able to tap both of these by going to that one spot. Now you are gonna lose somebody to jail unless I go here. I am. Well, no matter what, even if I go here, one person will be going to jail. But I don't really mind that as long as I maintain this card. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I guess I'll just take this for free. Yeah. And I'm not going to keep them, though. This allows me to go up on my noble track here so that when I take, if slash when I take this action, I can I can uh, use them both mm -hmm. instead of just one. Sure. So that at least gives me the efficiency to tap into both of my nobles. All right, this is kind of crummy. I don't want to do this, but I have to. Mm. It's gonna be going here so I can use Mr. Bergman, or Brugman. Brugman, I, need I was to get gonna five go there coins. If, okay. if you weren't. I, I, so. You're already beating me in three of the four column majorities and I can't let you be able to get access to your five coins there. I guess you can get it a different way, but at least <sighs> I was debating selling one of these pieces of art, mm -hmm. but then when you pass, you get one coin for every art, so yeah. I might as well just sell at the beginning of the next round. Right. Okay, well, it goes back to me for my final turn, uh, and here's the debate. I can't go to any of these two spots, really. It would be a little petty for me to just go and do, because I can't sell anything, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't be using the action space. I could, I wanted to go there, yep. but now that you took that spot, I could go here for a coin, coin less. less, but if I don't go there now, we would both lose a, uh, an architect. I don't know what the answer is. All I know is I don't want to go into the next round with only two coins. Sure. So I think I am going to go here. Okay. I'm going to go here. I'm going to take four coins because, again, that is what it says at the, at very the top, top of the stock, of card. The stock exchange yeah. card. So one, two, three, four. 
Okay. All right. So then that is it. Okay. Naveen, you auto pass. Yeah, so I pass. So I'm going to take this, which is great. Yes. And so now you get, get one coin for each different colored artwork you have, yep. plus one because you were the one who passed first. Yep. And so that's three coins. If next round you did not pass first, then you do not get that coin. Mm -hmm. But in a future round, if you do again, then the coins are cumulative. Yeah. Just the mannequin piece or not. Okay, so then I pass. I don't have any artwork in front of me, so that is it. That is the end of the actions phase. It's already been a whirlwind of a game. <laughs> it's stressful. Yeah, it's hard. So let's go into the resolutions phase, sure. starting with the column majorities. So starting in this column, um, I paid two coins two to, to my one. your one, so I gained this card. You do. This column, I paid three coins to your two, so you I gained did. this card. This coin or this this column, you paid two coins so uncontested, yep. and I was uncontested here for two coins as well. Before we make our decisions on these cards, count your mannequin piece. Yeah, unfortunately, I have five total: two for passing, plus three to your six. I have six, so yeah. you do not include the one on the first player marker. But because of that, I do get to keep first player for the next round. Okay. All right. So with these, decide what you want to do with them. Um, I'm just gonna go first. Sure. With this one, I will use it for the iris scoring okay. so that I can start moving up on that track and this will get discarded. These two, I only have two nobles right now. I'm, a, I'm very afraid of keeping nobles because of how expensive they can be. So I don't necessarily know that I care to go up on here. So I will keep them both for their multipliers. I think I'm going to put the two multiplier up here. Yeah, you have That's a way to get more workers. Each worker, uh, starting with the third one onwards that you have at the end of the game. And this one I have to place in a separate section I already have two nobles, so I think I'm just going to place it there. Sure. All right. How about you? Yeah, so uh, nobles game, I know I have this track that says go up on nobles, but I'm, I'm finding myself in money issues. So I think I'm just knowing that I'm probably going to have a lot of workers yeah. at the end of the game. I'm just going to tuck this right over here. All right. All right. There we go. Very good. Okay, that's me. Okay, so then we are going to score the iris majorities. And let's just start from the... Top, yep. top here. So because it's completely surrounded, this scores and it is a tie. And again, ties are friendly. Two you score two. for where you are. So yeah. both at two? Two, yep. All right, so one, two, one, two. Um, down here. Now I will say we are assuming that in a two-player game, this counts. Um, it would make it very difficult in a two-player game to fully surround without Yeah, it. I will say we looked this up on BGG, couldn't find a definitive Can't answer. So the way that we're going to play it is the neutral architect meeple will count for, because it's still a meeple. It's, it, it's, still yeah, a it's still a worker that is surrounding that iris, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to score for this. Naveen, you get the majority there. Two points. One, two. Moving over here, that's Me. again you. One, two. Moving over here, it's not completely surrounded. Neither is this, and neither is this. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Wow, you did great. Maybe yeah, that, that was majority. my debate, was do I sell here and, and you know get four coins and two points, yeah. plus I'd get another majority there, but that I didn't want to... That been good. It, it could have been good, but <laughs> yeah. I, I have money going into the next round, which you feels, do. feels better. That's true. And finally, we resolve the Brussels board. So I have the most number of architects in these action so spaces, so I lose one. Okay. All right. Back. That is it. We're yeah. going to clean up for the next round. Sure. So you take all your architects back, the ones who are not we clear off the money. in the court, and then the money gets discarded. Also, in a two-player game, we each take back our neutral uh, worker, and then all the money goes back, back into the supply. The so all of this is gone. But at least the building stays there. <laughs> it does up there. Which is nice. Okay. Any unexhausted nobles get, or any exhausted, exhausted. nobles get unexhausted. Yep. We also refresh the nobles track. So the rightmost one, the rightmost in the display is always gonna get discarded and we move the next one down. Any prestige cards mm. that are left over here also get discarded because we are going to have a fresh row going into the next round. So these cards are Whoa. the, <laughs> did we shuffle these? <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, pretty good. Well, all right. And just like that, we are ready for round two. two. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's have our next uh, stock exchange card. So that so gets discarded, out. and we'll flip over the next one. Next I'm still one. first player. Okay, so this one's worth six, and okay. it's a two, four, and four, two. Two, four, which would be where we were just at, mm. right? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. I think that's exactly that's the where exact we were. exact same thing, yeah. Two, four, or four, two. Mm -hmm. We're going to play with the same. <laughs> yeah, 2442, four, huh? I definitely want to include the active area that has my building in it. Sure. So we're going to go 2 4. We're going to go just like that. Nice. All right. I have to block off uh, a spot first. I'm going to do what you did. 
I'm going to do what you did last round. I'm going to block off the one spot that lets you build, especially because I'm not ready. Okay, <laughs> I perfect. don't have no, materials no, to fine. build. So again, when you place these out, you cannot place it in a spot that has a building. All right, then I'll just block off this spot here. Ah, cubes. my bonus. Yeah, one of yours. So then I'm going to go first, and I'm going to place two coins with my architect uh, meeple up here. Okay. So this is the spot that lets me take... A, a two materials. Now, because again, I'm Victor Horta, I also get two coins from the supply. It's like you never paid for it's it. It's like I didn't pay. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll go with one blue okay. and one yellow. Blue and yellow? Just to plan for the future. Okay. And that's me. So now it goes back to you. Okay, so now that you have everything you need to construct, uh -huh. I will go here. Okay. And I will do the construction. So uh, I'm going to be doing from the bottom row, uh -huh. and it's three money and one stone. So mm -hmm. one stone, and I have to pay uh, in denominations of each of the criteria there. So there we go. This goes back up there. Oh, yeah, there we go. Thank you. Sorry, stone. Okay. So this, I must move the blue into uh -huh. the dead space. Yes, because again, the legs cannot intersect. Yep. And then now we're going to put out our very first wait, wait. house. Oh, yeah. You sorry. did not use a white cube. I didn't. I'd so like you gain five, five points. points. So you're going to go to 11. Yes. And then go ahead and place out your house. Okay. Okay, knowing that this is the dead center and this is your your baby, your money-making baby, baby, I'm going to put that right over there. Okay. There we go. Well then, it looks like you made <laughs> you made building buildings extremely expensive. I did. Because now it's going to cost basically six coins because you coins. can only pay with money. So I think I'm just going to place two coins and one architect meeple here. Okay. I'm going to get me... Uh, a piece of art, finally. I don't have any art. So I think I'll go with yellow. Can you pass me a yellow one, please? Yellow. Uh, only because it's on the same plane as the green, and Naveen has a green. So if I he do. chooses to sell first, the indicator will sort of move uh, with, with yellow it. too, mm -hmm. I guess. I don't know. That's just how, <laughs> that's how I was thinking of it. Okay. All right, let's go make some money. So I'm going to place out two coins mm -hmm. onto this slot here. And so I'm going to finally sell some art. Nice. Uh, I'm going to sell the green one. Uh -huh. And so because I have two pieces of art, I can move it twice. So I'm going to move it just down one, two, like that. Okay. Uh, and so that's going to give me uh, two points and four coins, please. One, two, and four, four coins. coins. And then this one will go here. Three, four. four. There you go. Yep. Beautiful. Thanks. All right, done? That's it. Okay, so back to me. I think I am just going to go here. Okay. So now we're tied, Naveen. And this allows me to take the effects of my nobles according to my crown track. My yeah. crown track's at two, which means I can tap them both. So George's Brugman will get me five coins. And then Emil over here will let me, will let me free one of my architects. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Boy. From the courthouse. I have to do that because basically every round that I go here, I'm going to keep on losing yeah, one. That's perfect. So I, you I, have a way to just get it right back. If I'm going to pay them four I, coins at the end of the game. I need my own version <laughs> of that. They better I need be that card. Providing me a service. Yeah. I mean, look at this. That's great, actually. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to spend four coins. This is a lot of money. Wow. Where? Here. One, really? two, three, four. And then I'll go here. <laughs> so that is my benefit, is being able to take this action. So... Uh, Resource-wise, what am I going to take? Oh, but this is so good. I know. Oh, my gosh. This is killer. I think I'm going to take the brown. Brown? So brown is going to give me uh, one brown cube. Okay. There we go. All right. So you have a total of three coins here. Uh, four. Oh, one, two, three, four. I have two, which two. means I would have to place three there. Yeah. Ah, it might be worth it because my benefit here is the architect track. And, ah. Uh, so I think I have to do it, right? I'm going to place three coins at the top here. Okay. It's going to get me a noble action. Um, so what are my noble options? I could take this and go up on here for free. This is five points. Oh my goodness, but I have to spend a coin. I feel like because I'm getting this card, it's going to push me up on the iris track and me getting this would allow me to go onto the three spot. It's only the second round, so the, the returns on this will be greater, I hope, than just five points. And it's free. Okay. So I'm just going to take this card, and I'm not going to keep the card. I'm just going to use it to push up on the iris track. So this gets discarded, and these will move over. Can you flip over the next one, uh, please? Yes. Okay. All right. There back to you. 
Well, I want to secure something, so I am going to sell my brown piece of art uh -huh. and just go right over here. So I know I will secure this at okay. least. So you are definitely going to get first player. We're definitely getting first player. Because yeah. there's three mannequin piece uh, symbols here right. and none on the other cards. Yeah, and passing only gets you two. So, yeah. okay, so I'm going to, because I cannot sell blue, since blue is already there, I'm going to sell that that brown that I acquired. Uh -huh. I'm going to boot out my blue. Wait, wait, wait. So, you, so you can move the indicator. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. So, uh, so two, I can, two, two spaces. spaces. Yeah, let's just get myself some victory points. Right We're now it's Two. two. So this will get me six victory points. But so. no money. Is that okay with you? I mean, one, two. Let's see. If I went one, two, that's two and four. All right, fine. You convinced me. Okay, okay. I will do four points and two coins. Okay, because I know so you said you were hurting out. for I am hurting for, for some so cash. Two, two coins? Two, uh, two coins two and coins, then four victory points. Four points. So okay. you're going to be at 17. 17. Oh, you're doing really well. Uh, wheel in. <laughs> All right. Dealing. Well, it is not ideal, but I think I'm going to sell my piece of artwork. Okay. And um, I'm saying that it's not ideal because I have to go on my own building, which sure. means I'm not going to get the kickback. Right. So I'm just using one coin, just a lowly one <laughs> mm -hmm. Belgian franc, sure. I believe. Yep. And I'm going to sell my yellow piece of art. I can move the indicator one space. Right now it's at two coins and four points. Ugh. I think I would like... I think I'd prefer more money going four into the third four. round. So I'm moving it one space downward, so it's four coins and four points. And I would like to boot out... Let's boot out brown. Brown? Please. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So what is it? Four, four, four and points. Four. So now I'm no, at four and, 13. Yeah, four. Yeah. And then four coins. So one, two, three, four. Okay. So back to you for your final action. Final action. Okay, I think I'm just gonna spend two coins and go onto my own building. <laughs> and okay. There we go. So I'm gonna get two cubes. Uh, the good thing is I was able to surround this here. And you're gonna get these two cards. And I'm gonna get both these cards, yeah. So uh, two cubes, I'm gonna take a blue <laughs> and okay. a... You have so many cubes. I do, and they're all worth one point at the end if I don't, but if I don't use them. Blue and a, oh, let's go yellow. Nice. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> There's that. The stress. Are you stressed? Yeah. yeah. The frustration. I feel like I'm, I'm yes, I am very stressed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's back to me for my final turn. This is going to be quite expensive. Okay. But I think there's a way for me to get both of these. So I'm going to place one coin and one worker here. This is a noble action. So I'm going to take this one. Mm. So this is going to cost me three more coins. So it is very expensive. You're going to trash I'm not, it or you're gonna keep it? I can't keep it because I oh, already have one. Person. But it does get me my last Worker. architect people out of the courthouse, oh. which I'm assuming it's back to you in your passing. Yeah, I'm going to pass. Okay. So I'm going to take this mannequin piece. So there we go. <laughs> you get two coins. Two coins plus one artwork, so three coins. Oh, yes. Sorry. One, two, three. Yep. There you go. Thanks. All right, so then you're out, and it goes back to me. This would then refill. Oh, yes, thank you. There you go. And I really just need to place one more worker here, and the reason why I wanted both spots is for the iris scoring. Yeah, you're and doing very well. it's another noble action. So, oh, this is, whoo, five points for free, or one coin to go up on this. Which is your asymmetric track. Yeah, I'm already going to go up one, two, three times. And we're only going into the third round. So maybe I'll just take this for free because I want to have more money going into the third round. Okay. So you're so just going to take it for five, five points. points? Yeah, I'm sticking it for five points. So it just goes to 18. Eesh. Okay. So these move over mm -hmm. and we refill. That's up. All right. No more workers. I'm passing. I don't have any art in front of me. So I don't get any additional money. Mm -hmm. But that is it. That is the end of the actions. <laughs> Let's go into resolutions of round two. Sure. Ah, oh, it's so stressful. Okay, here we go. Call of majorities. So I paid five to your four, which means I get this. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to here, I'm uncontested, so I take this one. Yep. Moving on to here, you paid two to my one, so you gain this. I do. And you are uncontested in this column, so you also gain this. Yes, okay. Now, you are the only one who has mannequin piece yeah, symbols. It's five total. It's five total, so you are going to be first player. Thank you. In the next round, congratulations. Sheesh. All right, so then we are going to decide what we want to do with these. I think I'm going to just take them for their benefits. As okay. tempting as it is to keep them, because there are two multipliers each, it's just so good, the benefits, right? Yeah. So I'm going to go up a total of three spaces on the architect track. So now all my buildings are worth eight points at the end of the game and one space on the iris track, bringing me into the three-point threshold. It's pretty good. Okay, so although I would love to have a double score extra on here, I need more workers. So I'm going to take two workers from okay. the jail, since considering one is going to go to jail. The courthouse. <laughs> We're going to jail, let's be honest. And then okay. uh, this one right here. 
Uh-huh. Um, I think I will take the bump up on this track. Because I have plans to build. I have building material. I have money. Yeah. And I got stuff. Plus, it is still early. And I, I don't know about you, but I don't know which scoring criteria I am tied to. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, these tracks are a little bit more important to me right now. Okay. So let's score the iris uh, symbols starting up here. So I'm uncontested. I score three points now yeah, yeah, for this, them. This is, One, this is where it's going to get real bad for me. Three. This, I have the majority, and it's fully enclosed. So another three. So I go up to 24. Moving over here, uh, it is fully encircled. I have the majority. Mm. So I go to 27. How's this even possible? Up here, <laughs> it's the same. So I go up to 30. Uh, over here, we're tied. No, 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 no sorry. Nope. The neutral Nobody player has it. the majority. Nobody gets it. Over here, you have the majority. So what are you at? Two. Two. Okay, so one, two. Okay. That's all the iris scoring. We are tied in on the Brussels board. So both of these go to the court. All right. That is it for the resolutions phase. Now, we did clean up already. So we're not going to make you sit through it. We're just going to go ahead and do all of the cleanup, and we'll see you in round three. Okay, we've done all cleanup. We are going to go into round three. Mm-hmm. So we need to figure out what the stock card is to yes. determine the other things. And you are the so first player I am now. first player. It is going to be 1 3 or 3 1 with a 5 money at the top. Okay, so 1 3 mm-hmm. is here. Okay. So it would be this space if you want to. So it would okay. be like that. Okay. Or 3 1, which is going to be this space. What would you like to do? Well, let's do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Include your building and not mine? Yeah. Ah, uh, that's fair. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that is it for planning. So, Naveen, would you care to block off a spot first? Okay, let's block off. Oh, and these get unexhausted. Sorry. Oh, yeah. There you go. Well, considering you like building stuff and I have a building on building stuff, let's just block this one off right there. Okay. And I guess I will do the same. I will just block off a <laughs> <laughs> one of your spots okay. here. Sounds good. Okay, well, go ahead, starting with you, take your first action. Well, I'm going to get it while I can. I'm going to spend one coin and go onto this spot here, which is my benefit. Mm-hmm. I will, so I w- I'm going to take a yellow. Okay. Even though yellow's out there. Uh-huh. And I'm going to take a yellow cube as my benefit. All right. Well, back to me. For my first turn, I'm just going to go here. I'm going to go here and tap my nobles now. So five coins so and good. my worker meeple. And I'm just going to take a five. Boom. It's too good. All right. Back to you. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of like this spot. I'm going to go ahead and put one coin out here. Mm -hmm. Or, well, now, you know what? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I will put one coin out here. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to take this noble here, this free one, who's Uh going to give me two white cubes because nothing is happening here. And we need to build. Okay. I need to build. So I'm just going to take it for the two white cubes. We're just going to slide these down. Very good. And it is going to be your turn. So where did you go? You went here. here? Yeah, so if you want to close uh, it out, you should sell some art, I but you don't have any art. I should sell some art that I don't have. you don't have any art, that's so that's so why I put one coin down. Nasty. Nasty. Yeah. Okay. Well, back to me. And as much as I hate to do this, <laughs> okay. I think I have to go here. Sweet. This is the only spot available that allows me to take uh, some cubes. I'm going to okay. place three coins there. Three coins. I'm going with three. Whoa. So, uh, well, do I care that much? Mm. Honestly, I don't think I care that much. I'm going to place one coin. Just one coin. One so. coin. So the way that this works is whoever places their meeple there takes their action first, and then whoever owns the building will get their free action last. Okay. So this is gaining me uh, two refined materials. Again, my player board gets me two coins for going to that spot. And I'll take a blue and a yellow. A blue and a yellow? Yes. Okay. All right, Naveen, which one would you like? Okay. Because Naveen owns that building, he gets one refined material of his choice. I do. Well, considering I have a lot of yellow and yellow's coming next, I think I'm going to go with a the blue. Okay, I'll go with the blue. <laughs> okay. <I don't laughs> Such a difficult decision. It is a difficult decision, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, it goes back to you. Well, I could just put one coin down here and get it. And you'd get and it. And do the architecture. Or you can not do that, and then I can place one coin there and get it. So it's kind of... Kind yeah, of but then I would there. be the one to surround this also. It's true. I would just lock it in. It's too good. But if even if you put it in there, I would still lock it in. I feel like you've had more of these columns, and if I can get something in cheap, I might as well do it now. And I have the white cubes to do this now. So I will break this wheel finally for us <laughs> so we can start building a little bit here. Okay. Okay. So uh, I am going to construct, and um, it, because it's on three money or nothing, yes. it's six, basically six money, I... Uh, if you're going to spend one white cube, you might as well spend as many white cubes as possible because you're not going to get the five points anyway. Yeah. So I'm going to spend these two to represent each of the three denominations of the threes there. <laughs> okay. So this is now going to go out. Okay. And then where do you go? Well, you rotate there? the compass. I do rotate the compass. And then place out your building. 
So I will rotate it. How many yellow do you have? You have I have two, two yellow. Uh, so it doesn't really matter. It just yeah. what do you what do you care I guess about what are you gonna do? happening after? Because you're gonna do something. I'll go like this. This will force you to have to move the other one, and it'll keep me on the blue. That's true. So there we go. And then now I get to figure out where I'm going to put this out. I feel like in a two-player game, no matter where I put this thing out, you're going to go to the opposite action that doesn't benefit this. That's the plan. <laughs> so, so I'm going to put it here. <laughs> OK. Just because it's more centralized. I would love to put it on one of these building spots, but I yeah. know you're just going to take the one that's not it. So <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So you're going to go with the noble. I'm going to go with the noble. Do you like the benefit that the noble space allows you? Which would allow me to get five coins every single time. Yeah. And it's more centralized here versus these are on the outskirts. So that is true. I never quite know where it's going to show up because you know we get, we're at the mercy of this uh, card over here. Yes. And by the way, if you did not join us for the teach, the game comes with a stack of these and you just randomly uh, draw five of them, one per each round. I have no idea so where really never know go. which active areas are going to be available. Yeah, th this might never actually get uh, triggered, especially in a two-player game. Yeah, I yeah. really hope not. Uh, yeah, so I did not get the five points because I used white, and I think that was it. Okay, so then I am going to go here with three coins. Okay. This is a construct action, and I will construct now that the compass is a little bit more forgiving. So three blue, so two blue for you. Two, this last uh, house here only requires two resources, but they both have to be blue. So there's that. I get the five points because I did not use a white cube. So I go to 35. And I am forced to rotate the left the leg left all the way up to right the yellow. There. Uh, where do I place this? That's the question. You know, I'm going to place it on the other construct spot. Okay. I don't know if anybody's going to take it, but if anybody wants to, there you go. Mm. All right, that is me. So it goes back to you. Well, I'm going to get it while it's good. I'm going to put one <laughs> coin on well, this spot so I can guarantee this win over here. Look at you. You have two of these uh, now. Finally, you know. So I'm going to wheel and deal some art so moment. I cannot sell yellow. Correct. Uh, but I can sell blue. Would you like to move the indicator? I'm gonna, uh, I will, yeah. So I'm going to, I can move it up to two spaces. So I'm going to go one, two, like that. Okay. I'm going to boot yellow art out. Nice. And then I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to go by the, by the blue here. So I'm going to get two coins and two points. Awesome. Here's your two coins and two points. Two points. Two, co two coins, two points, two right? Two coins, two points, yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, how many more? You have two more architects? Yeah, you have a lot of four. architects. Okay. You have too many architects, to be honest. All right, well, considering there are no more spaces for me to gain refined materials, I think I have to just go here. So mm. I'm already going to be losing a, <laughs> a, a meeple. That's Might good. as well go there. That's good to know. So I'm going to go there, and I'm going to take this action. Now, I consulted with the back of the rule book that talks about the asymmetries, and it says that you can still gain the benefits by taking the action there. That's too bad. So I'm going to take the refined materials action, which means I get two coins. Well, material, huh? And I think, I think I'll take a blue and a yellow again. Yep. Just one, one of each, just like well. that. All right, that's me. So now it goes back to you. Well, now that you're all geared up. Yeah, I'm geared up. All right, I'm gonna have to construct and give you a little benefit. Yay! There we go. You going here? Yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a cheapy though. I'm just gonna put a one. Okay. Just make it real simple. One and one coin. One and one coin. All right. So you do your construct action, and then I'll gain my benefit last. Yeah. So uh, it's now gonna be three cubes worth. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna do, and you must do at least one of each. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna do two blue mm -hmm. and one yellow. Okay. So that's going to be it. So I did not use any white. So you get five points. You get five points. So you go to 26. 26. I need points. All right. Um, you have to rotate that. I must. So I'm just going to do this one. Okay. All right. So all I'm right. going to be forced to pay all yellow. All your yellow. In yeah. my, the next time I build. All right. So where are you placing out your building? Oh, yeah. Um, let's go ahead and place them out. Let's just place them out here. In that spot? <laughs> In that spot. Uh, if you want this. Give me um, something. Give me something. Yeah. <laughs> This is my one time. All right. Well, now that that's done, I gain my benefit since you're using my building, which is one point for each constructed building. So I have two of them, so just two points. One, two. That's it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think I need to win something. Right now, I'm not winning any of these cards. The tables are sort of going to turn in this round because Naveen is going to win a bunch of this iris scoring. Beautiful. So um, I'm going to go here with one coin oh. since I've placed three here. Kay. Anyway, you're going to get a kickback for this. You're going to get five coins. Wait, hold on. That's a bad plan. You can go here and give me five coins. Oh, my gosh. All right, fine. I'm going to put two coins, mm. two coins on here then. Okay. So you would have to place five or six coins here a lot. to either make it so I don't take this or you take it yourself. Anywho, <laughs> I'm doing that. Yeah. I get sick of noble action. I'm just going to pay one coin 
to Boosties. use this one. Are you going to get rid of them? I'm getting rid of them, but it lets me go up on my uh, this track. And yeah. architect track, the architect track. So I'm almost maxed out. I need to build these buildings, though. Uh, Ernest is, is just so present on the board the here. Problem. I know. There's Ernest a has problem. a monopoly yeah. uh, in the nobles. You need a new round to get rid of one of Ernest. <laughs> well, it's back to you for your final turn. Final turn. Okay, so if I go here... Have, yeah, you said how many? Oh, I get. Wait, wait, wait. You, I get yes, a benefit here. So you do. I am You're gonna five be able coins. to tap this. So there you go. I think I will not spend all my money. Okay. I'm just gonna put one coin onto this spot right here, just to make sure that I get this iris scoring here. Yeah. And I will get get to sell this uh, this yellow, which is at its six six max right here. So you won't move it. I'm definitely not gonna move it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and boot off the blue. Okay. Okay. So you're going to get six points, six so points. 26 to 32. Yeah, and six coins. And six coins. Oh. So now you are living in a, money bags. a land of bounty. We'll see. Too bad you don't have any nobles. You have all that money. Well, now maybe you can start doing this scoring, <laughs> right? I think I'm going to have to use that money to try to get some area Other control. things. Yeah. <laughs> all That's right. It's more realistic. Well, it is back to me, and we are now running out of time. We're running out of space, too. There really is no point in me going here unless I really want this card. Which I think I would rather not take the card and not give you these yeah, points. The points. So nobody will get the card and I won't give you the benefit. Although there is no benefit for There's you no now. There is no benefit. So I'm going to use this uh, opportunity to build. So I have to place two architects here. Oof, so there already was yeah. one there. I'm taking the construct action. Right now I have to pay it all in yellow. And this row requires me to spend three cubes. Off they go. So off they go. All of my wares. <sighs> Goodbye. That's, so good. um, That's good. Though. I did not use white, so I do get one, two, three, four, five points. Mm -hmm. And I have to rotate that. I'm required to rotate the one that's rotate. pointing so at the yellow. This would go back there, yeah. Yes. So, gonna go there. so that is the most ideal spot for you, considering you have so many cubes. It's pretty ideal. And I'm going to place out one of my buildings. Now, I am forced to place it in a spot that is not in the active area because it's all filled now. Mm -hmm. What is this? action uh that's the noble, the noble action yeah. uh, it is really hard to say i'm just gonna place it here okay. for now so that i can get a cube maybe and that's it so you've already passed uh i am now officially passing okay so this is my time so, so go, ahead go ahead and take, take this so uh, i get three coins you have so much money you're gonna be such a bully next round i want to be three i coins. felt like i was being bullied the first two rounds <laughs> Okay, uh, and then I'm going to pass. I don't have any artwork in front of me. And that is the end of the actions phase for round three. three yep. So shall we go into resolutions? Mm -hmm. We are more than halfway through now. We are, yeah. All right, call the majorities. I That's paid you. five to your one, so I take this. You paid two, two to, your one. to my one, so you take, take this. That. You are uncontested here. Perfect. And also uncontested here. Excellent. This is your round. This is it. Boom. This All right. Moment. Uh, mannequin <laughs> piece, I'm assuming you have majority. Uh, five, six, seven. So you maintain first. Yep. And then I only have one, so sure. shall I decide? Yeah, I'm just go going it. to... Are you going to boost it? Um, Are you going all the way to the top? I'm going up all the way to the top yeah. of my architect track. So this goes out. times however many buildings. Now I don't have out. to worry about my architect track for the rest of the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. How about you? What are you going to do with yours? You're going to win a bunch of these iris majorities. So I don't know what you want to do. One, two, three, four spaces. Yeah, so four I, uh, I only two have three them. can get me there. Well, I know I'm going to definitely be building more, so I think with this particular one, I am going to go up on this track here yes. because I really need to compete with these buildings. So that's out, and there is no way to tuck this one anyway. And that's four options, but you only choose one. Exactly. And then I think with both of these, uh, I am going to tuck. Oh, okay. I'm going to tuck. So I'm going to take uh, this one here. Okay. For the meeples. For the meeple workers. And then uh, I'm actually going to not tuck this one. Sorry. I'm going to take the extra meeple worker. Oh, okay. Right yeah. So use this benefit. In order to, so then I'll be maxed out on these. Okay. Right? So then I'm going to get the maximum amount of points going on this track right here. All right. So let's move on to Iris Majorities. Here we both get it. So I'm at three and you're at two. two. So one, two, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. uh, and then everything else you're going to get, I think. So here, one, two. Moving on to here, one, two, up here, also one, mm, two. Keep going. Oh my gosh, didn't no, this is there. not, that's no, it. That's it. Yeah. I'm so glad I didn't go yeah, here. Yeah, if you went it there, it would have been, been an additional four points it for you. It would have been, yeah. Whew, great. Yeah, when you were debating it, I was like, oh man, I want four points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, yeah. past self. Okay, yeah. I am uncontested for the bad majority. Off you go. And that is it. So we are going to get cleaned up for the next round, and we'll see you in round four.
Okay, we are all ready for round four. Yes. New stock exchange card comes out. You're and still it first. is worth six. Ooh, that's better than George's. Yeah. Two, so, three, and three, two. Two, three, uh -huh. which would be like this. Oof. Two, three, or three and two. I have a hard time with this. What color am I? Blue? Uh, oh, boy. Naveen, two, your three, first or player. three, two. Wait, wait a second. What was that two, three looking like? Two, three is here. That would Here? Yeah. That would be this so you're area. saying there's no way to construct? Huh? There's, there's no, no way? way to construct. There's no way can no, not there. There's only one way to construct. Correct. I will I will keep it this way. What? Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to keep it lean and mean. Lean and mean. All right, Naveen. You have a 12x multiplier on construction. I cannot yes. just let you just have your way. I have a lot of buildings and that I need to no focus on. And you have no resources though. So what am you're I You're pointing out all the flaws <laughs> in my player area. Yeah. You want to put out your yellow? A little meeple? blocky? Yes. So we cannot block our buildings. Correct. Oh, wow. So this makes it these are really tight. Only available spaces. And just in case you're wondering, if ever there's an active area with no available empty spaces, you cannot place out your yellow blocker. All right. I'm just going to block that one off. Ugh, nasty. Well, I think I'm just going to have to block off this one. Yeah. Because that is such an ideal space anyway, because it's in between two iris it, scoring. It is. So then it is you. You are first. Okay, it's me. So I am just going to go ahead and put out, let's go with. I think I'm gonna go three coins here. Okay. And this is my benefit. So mm. I am going to take brown. Brown. And if I'm taking brown, because that's my benefit, I get one of these uh, wood cubes. Nice. There we go. So then it goes to me. And like Naveen was mentioning, I don't have that much time left to put these out. Uh, this is going to feel super not ideal. And if I lose, this is the moment. Okay. But I'm going here Ooh. and I'm gonna build. So, so you're gonna spend six coins. I have to spend six coins because right now this is, requires me to spend three materials, Ooh. and the, it's only pointing at the three coins or cube area. Yeah. I only have one cube. So, so which all your means money. Six coins, one cube. Interesting. So that's going to. But at least I only needed to spend one of my workers yeah. okay. to do that. Okay. And there's only so many available spaces in the active area, also. So I figured let's just do it and see what happens. Wow. So I paid. I did not use a white cube, so I get five points. So I go to 50. Mm -hmm. um, I have to move that. Let's just move it to yellow. Move it to yellow? Yeah, because I'm so afraid of this space after brown, sure. yeah. <laughs> even though I Money. subjected myself to it right yeah. now. Uh, and then I'm going to put this out. And I think I'm just going to go there. Boom. Okay. It's a good. nice spot. All right, that's me. So it goes back to you. Well, it looks like if I go here with just one coin, I can get this one. Right. So I think I'm going to do that. Okay. Let's just do that now. So I've guaranteed this column. Uh huh. Uh, I'm going to get a noble. Boy, this noble is five points. Yeah, it's pretty nice. You have to pay two coins, even though you, I mean, you have so much money. I'll do it. Yeah, I'm going to spend two to get okay. five points. Yeah. Because the exchange at the end is four to one, so I might as well get two to five right now. Yeah, so that's really there we nice. Go. So really, I'm not really going nice. to keep it. I'm going to spend it uh, right away. You so get myself five points. You get 45. Yeah. Really, really close game right That's now. Super close. I'm a little nervous. There we go. Okay. Uh, it goes back to me. I have no money, which means I can't even place on this board, even if I here. wanted to. So I have to go here. Okay. Um, do you I, want six coins? Six you coins? You go to the stock exchange? You know, it's tempting. I'm going to do it. I'm okay. just going to go here. And I'm going to take six coins. Six coins. So it is more money uh, that is immediately available to me. Yep. Oh, I got exactly six. <laughs> okay. <laughs> back to you. Pretty good. I'm going to do this now before anything really bad happens. I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to put two workers out here. Okay. And I will also construct right now. Oh, okay. Uh, so um, it's going to cost me three cubes. So we have yellow, money, or anything of my choice. Yes. So you can literally do anything. Just include one yellow cube. Knowing that this is going to kick into brown, I probably don't want to spend as much brown. So I'm going to definitely do one blue. Mm hmm one yellow okay and another yellow let's do it this way actually this i think that's interesting is yeah. these cubes are worth one point at the end of the game which technically is worth four coins mm -hmm. so if you pay three coins you're actually spending less you yeah know what i mean the valuation is just a little bit just, better I like to have the resources right now it is less money in yeah. hand so so up to you. there we go so one two like that so i am so gonna you did do one blue and two yellow uh one blue and two yellow okay so so you get five points you get five points so now we are tied at tied. 50. And where are you going to place it? Okay. Oh, so sorry. You have to move that. I do. Yeah. So no matter what, it's going to go into the brown. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And then I'm going to place it on probably this construction zone here. I'm assuming that in the future, this will become a problem. Well, 
you're probably going to get first player for some reason, and then you can make that decision yourself. Yeah. yeah. And remember, as we start to construct these last two, you're going to get five points for every one you construct. Right. All right. Well, it's back to me, and I am not quite sure what to do, honestly. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much money to put anymore. I'm sort of at a loss. I'm just going to place three. Okay. I'm going to place three. I'm going to go on my own uh, building Maybe. here, which isn't going to give me a kickback, but I do get to gain two coins for that spot because it is going to gain me two refined materials. Okay. And let's just go with one yellow and one brown. I am going to need to pay four eventually, so it's kind of tough. What but do you have for now? Nothing? Yellow and brown. Okay, I have nothing. Brown. Okay, can I figure out how much to pay, but can I get change <laughs> for this five? Yes. <laughs> that is the uh, point in like the I game. I don't want to pay any more than that, I need to. Yeah, this that is, is tough. I just want to pay the bare minimum to get away with it. Yes. And what is that number? Right, especially in a two-player game. What is that number? I don't know. You have five? <laughs> I do. I have five, correct. Ah, uh, okay. So I am not going to assist you. I'm just going to go to my own thing. Okay. Put three out. Uh huh. And we are going to get myself a noble. And I think I like uh, this noble right here, the one that's going to cost me two. Mm hmm. Uh, and I'm going to be able to go up on this track, this building track. So I'm just going to get rid of this. Okay. I'm not going to keep it. Don't okay. want to have to pay them off. Okay. And that'll be that. Very good. Scary times. Scary times. So then it goes back to me, and I think I'm just going to pay the four. Ah, <laughs> it's nice. expensive, but at least I can take this middle spot. And um, I don't know. Take this <laughs> card. Give me another multiplier. Yep. So one, two, three, four. Because you paid three there, I right? Did, yeah. Okay. Dang it. I should have paid four. <laughs> that was the number. I was like, is it three or four? Yeah, that would be very expensive for me. All right. Ah. Then I take that. Yeah, that's true. That was the number. That was the that number. Was a number. Was there like was an answer. Three or four. Shoot. Okay, I get a noble. I only have one coin left. So I'm looking at Ernest or Ernest. Okay. <laughs> so I'll take this one for free. Okay. And it gains me a. This either gives you a refined material of your choice or you could turn in a white cube for two. I don't have a white you cube. Have a white. So I'm just going to get one of my choice. Let's see, I have a brown and a yellow. I don't think it matters too much. I'm going to take a brown. Brown. I have a brown, please. Okay. Thank you. At least it was free. Yep. Okay. All right. It's me. It goes back to you. Dang, so you have two you that, huh? workers left. You did do that. All right. I, got, I think I got to sell some art. Okay. Um, oh, all right. I will put out, uh, so this will be four coins here. Four? Yeah, four coins okay. there. Okay. So here's one change. Yep. Uh, one, two, three, four. Four on that. One, two, three, four. And Such a mess. This is your uh, your building. Yeah, I'm not so, going to get a benefit, though, no. because I don't have any pieces of art with me. Nope. So that was fine. Yep. Mighty so fine. I am going to uh, sell this uh, brown one. Okay. And then I don't want to boot off the yellow, to be honest. I feel like there's going to be a, a interesting race to get to that six, mm -hmm. six, six. So mm -hmm. I think I'm going to boot off the green here. Um, unfortunately, this might be a mistake. But uh, there was no need to move it, um, so I'm already happy with where it was. So I'm going to get six points and two coins, please. Here's your coins, and you are now at 56. 56. Wow, beautiful. Yeah. Ah, the stress is mm. super high. Um, you placed four there. Yeah. At least I'll just tie you. Tie me. I'm going to tie you, and nobody gets this card. But at least this closes this out, and I get a majority. Yep. So this is going to give me two coins because of it's a getting material spot. Mm -hmm. I get two refined materials, which I think, let's make it, um, I don't know. <laughs> Is a yellow, go, let's do one yellow, one brown. One brown, one yellow? Yes, thank you. And I got my two coins already. You did. So then you get one material since it was your building. Yeah. What would you like? I'll go yellow. Yellow? Yeah. All right. Well, that's that. It goes to you for your final Worker, Final worker, or you can pass can and take pass. first, or I can pass and so take first. So let me first. see. So it's uh, kind if of, I pass, yeah. I would get three coins, plus I'd have, let's see, I'm winning this one, so it's mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Are you winning this one? I am. I have four here. Right? One, two, three, four. To your three. Yes, I'm taking this. So it's one, three, but if I pass, I'd get another two, so it's three, three. And yes. then this last one is? Nobody gets it. Nobody gets it. So regardless of what happens, I think I'm going to take first player. Because in the case of a tie, if people are tied for the mannequin piece <laughs> symbols, then uh, it goes to whoever is sitting closest to the first player. Yeah. So uh. it's up to you. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to do it now while I can. Let's just get some white cubes. Whoa. Three white cubes because we have, I don't know. <laughs> 
Maybe I can get, because you know, what? I'd like to get the five points for getting these off plus a multiplier eventually. You yeah. Know? Like, Interesting. I'll just use white cubes for it. I won't so, get the five points in game, but it's a multiplier. Yeah, that is interesting. I could pass. That's a thing. Or I could go here and get five coins. Yep. I think having more money, even if we're tied at 7-7, seven, seven, is better than not. Well, more flexible. Yeah, more flexible. So I'm going to go there. <laughs> Sorry, there's fluff. No problem. And I technically get this worker back and five coins. Not that it matters too much because I won't be able to place that worker. So now it goes to you. You pass. Uh, I will pass. So I do get four coins. You do. So one, two, three, four. There yep. you go. Uh, no other coins because you don't have any artwork. No. I'm also going to pass. I don't have any artwork. I've been pretty artwork starved. I feel like the placements that we've had were a little tough. And I also kept blocking out your these spots because of your ability, yeah. not realizing that, hello, like it's keeping me from, <laughs> from taking artwork also. It is a spot. So anyway, that is it. We are done with the actions for the fourth round. Let's go into resolutions, shall we? Sure. Okay. Column majorities. You are uncontested here. So you take this. I paid four to your three, so I take this. I and think I think you paid four, four, and I paid four also, so nobody gets this. In the case of a tie, nobody gets it. Um, your mannequin piece symbols, you have three? Uh, yeah, I have one, two, three for this one, yep. And I have three total for this. Yeah. So I get to go first in the final round, which is fantastic. That's a bummer. I'm also gonna keep this <laughs> as a multiplier. And seeing as I probably won't have much money or any artwork at the end of the game, I'm gonna tuck it in here. I just have, sure have 4x on my workers, yeah. How about you? Yeah, okay, so um, there's nothing to tuck, so um, I think just having a multiplier mm -hmm. makes the most sense for me, so I'm just going to move up to that 8. Nice. There we so go. you're discarding that? Discarding it. Okay, let's do Iris Majorities. So nobody gets it here because the archet the yellow neutral player got it. Uh, you get how many points? Two points. Two points. Yeah, so I one, that up a little bit better. Two. Mm -hmm. uh, here, I score three points. So one, two, three. And up here... Eh, right? That's you. Yeah. One, two, three. Wow. Oh, we're getting closer. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So then we are tied here, three, three. So we each we put lose somebody. a worker in the courthouse. That is it for the round four resolutions phase. Uh, we're going to clean up for the final time, and we'll see you in the final round. All right. Welcome to the final round. We are all set up and ready to go. So final stock exchange, <laughs> and I get to make this decision. Well, it's worth seven. It's worth top. seven coins. Way to end the the game with this. Two two or three three. Two, two. Uh huh. So it would look like this. Uh huh. Interesting. Or or three three. <laughs> so it would be this again. <gasps> Are you going to do it again? Oh my gosh. I don't know what I'm going to do. Hold on. Let's see that again. So <laughs> 2, 2 looks like this. Ah, interesting. Hmm. You have a lot of buildings there. I do. <laughs> I have three buildings there. <laughs> Dang it. Let's do it. I'm yeah. going to leave it at that. That's not bad. It's pretty good. It's, <laughs> it's pretty good. It's not, not bad. So this is the... 2-2, two, two. Yep. the 2-2 two, two variant. <laughs> okay. All right, shall we block off some spaces? You may. All right, well, I will block off this space. That's for building. Actually, wait, I'm going to block off this space instead. Oh. I like the middle spot. It's still the same kind of uh, construction space. Mm -hmm. Oops. All right. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I am going to block off this space right here. Okay. There we go. All right, well, uh, it's me first, which is interesting. I mean, I guess I'll start by building, right? Sure. I'm just going to place one coin. I'm going to place one coin up here. So this is going to allow me to build. Okay. And these require four cubes each. They and do. right now we're at yellow and brown. So any combination of yellow and brown. So I'm going to turn in three brown and one yellow. Okay. So those are my four. Three brown, one yellow. I did not spend any white, which means I get the five points. So I go to 61. I'm going to move off of brown. Okay. The compass and onto the three spot. Get some cash. And then I get to place out um, this building, scoring me five points, 66. Okay. Because it's one of the top two. That scores immediately. And I will place this. Yeah, I'm going to place it here. Okay. All right. That's it. Okay. I'll go to your building. <laughs> What's your benefit? <laughs> this one? Yeah. I get a black, a black art one. Piece. Ooh, a black one. That's yeah. a nice one. Isn't that refreshing? Oh, shoot. You know what? I'm going to do it, but I'm going to go here instead. Okay. So I have to spend four, is it? You have to spend four, uh, three coins, or you can substitute with your white cube yeah. and yellow. 
Did but you yes. get the five points, by the way, for doing that? I did, yeah. Okay. Ooh, this is tough. <laughs> this is, oh, man. That, the way this ended here, not good. <laughs> it is really beneficial so to bad. go first. Oh, so bad. Okay, you know what? I'm actually going to go here instead. I will do it. Okay. okay. So what, what art piece would you like? Um, I <laughs> Probably green. Yeah, probably green. Dang it. <laughs> I'm not happy with it. By getting green, I do get a white. That is my benefit. So oh, okay. That is kind of nice. That is nice. Going into I white. get the Constellation uh, Black art you piece do. because that it is, is my building. Benefit. Thank you Way so to put much. That building out there. Nice doing business. Oh, yeah. I should probably put some money behind it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was going to let you have it for free. Yeah. All right. What, would you, what are you going to do? Well, let's see. What can you... You cannot physically build again, right? Right. All right. I'm just going to put one coin. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I'm, I think I have to do this, right? I might as well take this spot because I will get this and I only needed to put one coin. Yeah. So I'm going to go right. here and it's going to allow me to sell the beautiful art piece that I was gifted <laughs> last turn. I'm not going to move the indicator at four, all four. Yep. because this basically cannot go to the six. It's right in the middle of the indicator. Um, and it really doesn't matter what I boot, so I'll boot the yellow. Okay. Or, hold on, no. Yeah, you don't want to boot the yellow. I'll boot That's the brown. six and six just in case just there's in some case. way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's gonna get me four and four. Mm -hmm. So one, two, three, four, and Man. four coins. One, two, it. three. I think I blew it. Four. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you have that. A, you have a great multiplier. Thank you, thank that you. 12, huh? I, can't, I can't compete with this multiplier. Well, we'll see. Okay, I think I'm gonna sell that green art. Hmm? So I'm gonna sell that green art at your building, and I don't think you're gonna get a benefit. I'm not. Because you don't have any art in hand. Right. Uh, so I'm gonna sell this green art that I just picked up on the last turn, and I'm gonna boot out the black one. Okay. Okay. And then uh, I was not gonna move that because I don't think there's any benefit for me no. moving it. Yeah. No, it's just gonna decrease yeah. whatever you have going. Uh, so two points so and six coins. Two points, six coins, which is beautiful. Coins are important right now. There yeah. you go. There we go. All right, so it is back to me. And seeing as you have so much money, um, and you really don't have to pay anybody at the end of the game, I'm just going to go here with one coin okay. to get some resources. Again, that will gain me uh, two coins because okay. that's the material spot. And what materials do I need? Let's go with two blue. I'm going to take two blue two just blue. in case. All right, so you did that. I did that. All right. Then I guess I'm gonna have to construct, mm. and I'm just gonna be a real cheapy since I'm gonna get this column. Okay. I'll put the one there. You are gonna get five points, unfortunately, here, which stinks. <laughs> so it's, it's gonna cost me four. So it's gonna be uh, one, two, uh -huh. and then um, three, four with that. So right. So it's two yellow. Yep. And then two times the three coins for a total of six. six yep. Yes. So I get, I do get five points. You do get your five points. Plus another five. So 65 to 70. Yeah. Did you get me 10 points total? I gave you 10 points. Okay. And that's because of this. Yeah. Off. So where would you like to put it? doesn't matter oh, now. Oh, let's just honestly. tuck it into the corner over here. Okay. Did you move that? Oh, no. I do have to move that. Okay. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to shift it uh, like this. Okay. There we go. Rude. So you're short one. I'm short one. Yes. So you're forcing me to go here. But fortunately, I only need... Uh, one coin mm -hmm. to do that. So I'll go here so that I could take this too. Mm -hmm. And this is going to get me um, two... Is that that spot? Okay, good. Yep. Two cubes of my choice plus two coins. And you also get a cube of your choice. I you really don't need to wait for me. do. I'll just take So two. I need blue and yellow. I'll just take... Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll take two blue. Or does it matter? <gasps> Does it matter? I'm just gonna take the two blue because I just did the math really quick and I have a feeling I'm not gonna be able to build this at all. Mm. So <laughs> this will just be worth five points at the end of the game anyway. Yeah, that's true. All right, well, it goes back to you. Okay, and I did collect my blue, I believe, from when you took your action. Okay. All right, so uh, I have to construct. Mm -hmm. I have to do this, so I have to get this thing out. Okay, so uh, it's on yellow and blue. I'm gonna have to be filling it with some white. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually gonna just spend all four white and keep the blue behind because it's worth one point at the end of the game. Okay. So this is just gonna represent all wild. So I'm not gonna get five points for constructing, but for taking this out, mm -hmm. I will get five points. So we're just gonna go ahead and plop that down there. And then you have a lot of blue, so I have to move that there. I cannot let you do that. That is so rude, Naveen. I My multiplier is to... eight. Yours is 12. I'm officially so. not going to be able to build my final building. I do get five points, though, for this. For what? 
for, oh, for uh, the, actual the, the actual building itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you do. Ah, oh. <laughs> this game is frustrating. <laughs> Your multiplier is Russell's very good. Russell's is frustrating. It's very, your multiplier is good. Okay. You're in good shape. Well, it is back to me <laughs> after that frustrating realization. And I just have to say, my options are very slim because nobody can place here anymore. Nope. And white cubes get you nothing at the end of the game. You have to discard them before you go into end game scoring. I could place them here to take another action, but really to what end? And if I go here, I could get another five coins and my worker, my architect meeple, but you're, I'm just going to lose it again because we're going to end up tying. If I pass now, I will potentially get the first player marker, which is worth five points at the end of the game. So mm -hmm. that does kind of make up for some of what I would have lost. So I'm going to do it. I'm just going to pass. Yeah. And uh, I'll gain this, which gets me a coin. A coin. Well, actually, let's see. If you were to take this, you'd get two mannequin. Oh, because there are no symbols on these. So mm -hmm. whoever gets this gets the five points. They're going to get it, yeah. I'll just do it. Yeah, it's worth five. Taking this, I've passed. So you have passed. That's it. The end of the game. If I lose by yeah. 22 points, we know where <laughs> it came from. <laughs> it's sad because my biggest Salty. multiplier is this, and I'm about to send somebody to jail right now. And that now. was part of the decision making yeah. that I had there. If I were to go there, then we would both lose one. Yeah. Whereas it's, it's four both of our you. biggest multipliers. So let's just let you lose it. A person, you know? Let me lose a person. Yeah. Okay, so no matter what, I'm losing a person, but I think mathematically I'm going to score some points by doing this. So I'm going to go to the stock exchange and collect mm -hmm. seven. Okay. So my money is four plus seven, that's 11. Yep. And then you've passed. I've passed. And because it's four to one, uh, if I tap, oh, George, oh, I have to pay him off. Yeah, you do. Pay him off. <laughs> it's just so one coin. <laughs> one. I know, but George. Wait, what's your total? Five, six, seven. I'm going to be eight, short nine, one coin. Ten, 11. 11 plus 5, 16. 16 minus the 1 makes it 15. And yeah. It's 4 to 1. Yeah, it's just to get, just I know, to get but three be, points. Be, but if I was. You have the gamer oopsie. <laughs> the gamer oopsie. Uh, well, I got to do it then. All right, we're all going to jail. I mean, you might as well. Oh, well, there you go. We're all going and to jail. Five. The courthouse. It's the courthouse. The courthouse. <laughs> Explain yourself. It's a jail. It's the courthouse. And you have to pay these people off, huh? huh? I will. Oh, yeah, I will okay. at the okay. end of the game. So, anywho, ah, that is it. That's sad. The I end think you got me here. Is here. Yeah. So let's do our final resolution yep. phase, and then we'll go into end game scoring, mm. shall we? Yep. Okay. So columns. I have two to your one. So <laughs> yeah. I take this. What a multiplier. Um, this is uncontested. So I take this. Yes. And this is also uncontested, so you get this. I do. I'm the only one with the mannequin piece symbols, so I get the first player marker for the end of the game. Okay. Uh, These. Now, here's the question. The, this, the iris is really not going to do anything for me because the next spot here is another three. So I'm definitely going to use this for yeah, uh, the good. person multiplier. So now I'm at a multiplier of two, four, five, six. I cannot add this to this row. Nope. Um, I don't have any artwork. I don't have that much money because... Five of this is going to go away. So I really only have <laughs> one point extra. So this will only get me... So you're going to put it in your... Uh, two points. Into your peoples, your your nobles. I could for another two. That'll be four points. Or I could just get... I could just use it and get oh, my last, get last worker, worker back. Because yeah. I won't lose the worker. It's worth six points. And it's worth six points. So yeah. I'm just going to do that. So I've maxed out on this, this track. Taking your worker. Yeah. Ah. Taking my worker. Damn it. I've saved them <laughs> from the courthouse. All right. How about you? Oh, boy. What am I doing? All right, so I'm just going <laughs> to toss this here. Oh, okay, so you're going to use it for the multiplier. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, let's do uh, some iris scoring. So this is me. I'm at three. So one, two, three. Uh, over here, another three. One, two, three. That was this. Mm -hmm. Over here is Nobody. neither of us, and over here is Same. also neither. Okay. Okay. So we're off by one point. Last thing. Naveen. Off goes one. Oh, sorry. That's Did you okay. want to no, change? No, no, no. That's fine. <laughs> so sorry. Yeah. All right. That is the end of the resolution phase, the final one. So let's go into end game scoring. Sure. Now, the very first thing that happens at the end of the game is any white cubes that you have left over, you discard because we're not scoring for those. So it looks like neither of us have those. Yep. And then you must pay your nobles. Again, for each one you could not pay, minus five points. Yeah. So I have to pay five coins. So I have to pay one for my starting noble. I never got another noble. All right. Maybe that was a mistake. There we go. <laughs> well, hold on to them. Yep. 
because you'll score for them still. And by the way, for any nobles you couldn't pay, um, not only do you lose five points, you also discard them. So yeah. you don't get to score for them, mm -hmm. just so you know. Makes sense. All right, first things first, the heavy hitter. We are going to score for each building that we've constructed based off of our architect track. Yep. So you've, you've built all six. Six times eight is 48. 48. What's 48 plus 75? Can we do that math? Add 50 minus two. 123? Yep, 123. Is that right? Okay, yep. so you're going to go gonna all the way around. Hundo chit. And you get the hundred chit. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> All right. So I've only built five, uh, but my multiplier is 12. 12 so that's, that's 60. Too, that's just such a good board. 60 plus 76. Uh -huh. What's that? 136? Yeah. 136? Ooh. I hope that was the right math. Okay. Seems so I take this. Right. Next, for any leftover refined material, they each score one point. So I have five. Four. So 36 plus five is 41. Four for me. Four plus 23 27. is 27. Okay. Whoever has the first player marker gets five points. So that's Too 46. Good. Then finally, we score our four strategic rows. So let's just go from the bottom to the top. Sure. Right? So this is for every four coins, you get a point. I have seven. So I did the game of oopsie. Yeah. <laughs> it's just one point. How uh, about you? I have 15 total, so I get three points. Three points. So one, two, three. Okay. Next up is one point for each leftover artwork. We were not very good at getting artwork this game. I, did pretty, I, I was wheeling and dealing the you, art. You were. I turned it over, but I didn't, I didn't hang on to it. It's because we kept blocking off those spaces, I think. You need to turn in the money to, to be able to bid out there. So it, yeah. it's hard to just hold on to the art. Yeah, know? it's true. All right, then. So uh, you score for your nobles. I have two points on that multiplier. So I have two, two nobles times two. times two is four points. Four. I just so have one noble one, times two, one. Three, four. One point. So one point. And finally, for each architect that is unlocked, uh, starting with your third one. So minus these two, I have one, two, three, four, five. Right, because I think we have a total of seven. Seven total, yeah. So five times one, two, three, four, five, six. So 30. So 30. 51 Ooh. to 81. 181. 181. Yikes. Okay. How about you? Uh, so I have uh, seven total, two are locked. So what is it? Three, is it? One, so you have two. five, yeah, five minus two. Yeah, so, so three, three times, uh, was it one, two, three, four, five? So 15. 15. 15 yeah. plus 31. Mm -hmm. What is that? 46? 46. 46. All right. Ah. That is it. The final scores are Naveen with 146 to me with 181. 181. That is the end of Brussels, 1893. Could Here you imagine if I <laughs> did not block you out from getting your last building out? That would have been an extra 5 plus 12. I'm not happy about it. An extra 17. <laughs> you would have got the second shit. It would have been, it would have been worse. Bad. Real but, bad. So it was a very good move I had on your to. part. Yeah. It didn't feel good <laughs> to be in this position. Because yeah. you don't know. You don't know what the final score is going to be until yeah. the end of the game. What if that was a... What if that was the difference? Uh, was you know what I mean? Yeah. So in hindsight, <laughs> it's fine. But in the moment, it didn't feel very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. that is Brussels at two players. Uh, um, now, this game does play up to five, five yep. I believe. And in four and five player games, the Brussels board works a little bit differently. Yeah. You like basically you basically act as if each space has two spaces. Mm -hmm. So for the first two people who go to each space only have to put out one architect meeple. And yeah, then after exactly. that, it's it's two more. So it's like you can go like this, like this, but if the third player wants to come in, now they have to bring in two workers. Yes, exactly. Point. Other than that, everything else is the same. Like you still play with the same board size. Uh, the only difference is on the stock exchange card, it's going to be different depending on the player count in mm -hmm. terms of where you put the this tool thing. Yep. And of course, in, in uh, higher player counts than two, you do not have the neutral meeples. So right. that blocking mechanic was specific to a two player game. Mm -hmm. If you did not join us for for the beginning of the video, uh, the other thing that we were playing with was the asymmetric boards. And if you don't want to play with them, you don't have to. You can flip them over to the opposite side and they all have the exact same uh, scoring criteria and no bonus at all. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk about it, shall we? Sure, yeah. Okay, so this is not a new game. This is a new version of a game that was originally released in 2013. We actually have the original. Yeah. We've played the base game several times. Um, this one just happens to have, yeah. Yeah, wow, magic. There it is. <laughs> yeah. This is the original Brussels 1893 that came out in 2013, you said? Mm -hmm. 
There are some uh, very slight changes to the base game that we just played. And of course, this version of the game also comes with the new expansion that adds a few new things that changes the way the game feels. Uh, so we'll just start by talking about the base game, and then we will talk about the expansion in a bit. And also, before we forget, we do want to thank our Patreon community for voting on this game because it was only possible because of you all. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, Naveen, <laughs> what are your thoughts on the base game of Brussels 1893? Ooh, well, this one plays up to five players. Yes. And um, I actually, this is one of the first, uh, like, heavier Euros. I had played when first getting into the hobby, probably mm -hmm. back in like 2015, maybe something like that. Yeah, and that's right. um, yeah, it, it's really it's it's right up my alley in terms of dry euro. Um, so, <laughs> like it, it is. It if is. you watch the playthrough, you're like that is fairly dry. Yes, <laughs> right. This it's not dripping one, in theme at all. It might be one of the driest euros we own. Probably. Like it's it's very decorated. You know, yeah. it's ornate in terms of the artwork, but thematically. Like you're doing things and you're like, why? <laughs> why do we score the columns? Why are, uh, why are columns? we scoring for the irises? So it yeah. does not make thematic sense. So if you're if you're new to the term dry, it basically does not have any real thematic purpose besides the fact that you're buying art and selling art and buying stuff like art, that. Selling it, you're getting prestige, you're yes. working with nobles who are kind of giving you a leg up. It's a big bag of mechanics thrown buildings. into a game. Yeah. And so that is the strategic aspect. So it is very Euro-y. And I do remember that this is actually the first heavy uh, heavy board game that we'd played. It, like now playing it, you know, and, and playing games for about nine years, you know, pretty seriously. Mm -hmm. I don't see it as heavy anymore. Oh, I do. Do you really? I yeah. still think it's heavy. Okay, well, I, I, for me, it's like, okay, that this was a game that at the time was like, that's a lot of rules, you know. But now that we we play so many games, it feels, at least from my perspective, this is probably totally different for a lot of people. This is very like medium weight for me now. So I will yeah. say, in terms of rules overhead, I agree with you. The rules overhead is not that bad. Yeah, you spend I mean, the our, five actions. Yeah, and, it's, it's and, five basic actions. Yeah. Um, you just have to, and, and there are, you know, there's something in the back of the rule book that kind of uh, outlines all of the kickbacks that you get if you have buildings out. So you can always consult that. Mm -hmm. But it really is just five basic actions and three basic tracks. So that's really all you're focusing on. Mm -hmm. It's the strategy and mm -hmm. the gameplay and the thinking, the decision making that's really hard. It's really frustrating um, and I think the reason why it's so difficult to make those decisions is because of the mix between worker placement and area majority mm -hmm. so plus the the, the auction the um, the money mechanic the money when you have to place out uh, your workers onto the art nouveau board mm -hmm. that's basically bidding so oh, yeah. you have really a combination of these three uh, very different types of mechanics that they build whole games off of combined into one and you have to Hey, you're having to keep all of three of those things in mind every time. The main point of the game is to build buildings. Make yes. sure you have a way to get your buildings out there so that people can passively give you some benefits when they need to take those actions. If you can put them in this nice, like, strategic spots, mm -hmm. um, because you're not going to be able to just run away with, like, a pure noble strategy or a pure art strategy. Yes. As few uh, components, I guess, as there are to the scoring aspect of the game, like, the strategic rows are going to be distracting in the sense that some people might say, I want to do a full noble strategy, like Naveen said, or I want to do a an artwork strategy. I don't know if you would really do that. But really, the point is you want to build these buildings. And so everything that comes into play is going to sort of revolve around the buildings. You're going to put them out onto the Art Nouveau board so that you can get kickbacks from whenever opponents go there. And you're also going to be moving around the compass so that the, uh, the building materials that are required are going to be constantly changing. So it is a very tactical game, mm -hmm. and that is what makes it really difficult and really frustrating. <laughs> This Can is be, the yeah. most frustrating game that I love that's in our <laughs> collection that has stayed in our collection from the very beginning because especially especially at higher player counts, I think. I don't know. You might disagree with me on this, but Ooh. I think the more players you add, the more chaotic the game can get and uh, the more difficult it can be to sort of plan for building your buildings because people are going to be constantly moving the compass to change uh, the, the building material requirements to make it so that you can't build. Yeah. <laughs> and five rounds is not actually that long. Yeah, I've, you know? pl I've played it at all player counts, two through five, and I think my favorite is four. 
I actually four. prefer it at higher player counts. Five w got a little tedious at the end of round because mm -hmm. it's like, okay, circle this area. How many people did you score? Oh, what column? Mm -hmm. How much money did you do? At five, it was just like just dragging just a little bit uh, too much, and mm -hmm. that wheel just kind of moves around a lot with the building materials. Mm -hmm. um, but at four, it, there's a good balance between area control uh, for the iris scoring because mm -hmm. it's like, if I go in two spots, I know I'm, I'm probably pretty good. Mm. Um, versus in a, in a two-player game here, it felt very swingy. Like round one, you dominated the iris. Yeah. Then round two and three, I dominated it. Then when you got back to the to the first player, then you got to re-dominate mm. it. So uh, at four players, it kind of keeps everybody kind of in check just a little bit more. We've played it at three also, and that's still fun. But yeah. um, th at three, I will say the the other board, the, the Brussels board, is it? Uh, the one where you can go to jail for having too yes, many people there. Yes, the Brussels there. board, the left-hand side. The Brussels side. board. At three, man, that that is really tough because it's like player goes somewhere, you really want to go there, you immediately have to put, put two players out there mm. now, two of your pawns, and that's like, oh, man. <laughs> so, like, it's hard to, to justify oh, I that. See. But at four, it's like there's two for everybody. Yeah. It's just the right amount, and then you can kind of get in, kind of get out. I can um, see. I, I think so I, I really might like agree with you on that. I think the two-player game is fine. It is very, uh, it's very frustrating because you're blocking out spaces. It is, it is very tactical. The two-player game more than anything else. Mm -hmm. But at higher player counts, things will be moving. And even though it is a little bit more chaotic, uh, there are a lot more opportunities for you to kind of sneak in there. Especially the iris scoring and some of the area majorities. It's just a little bit more dynamic when mm -hmm. you have more players. I don't think I would ever play this game at five. Yeah. And the reason why it's is... It's fine at five, but yeah. It depends on who you're playing with. Sure. Uh, and the reason why is because this causes a lot of analysis paralysis. And the more players you add, just the longer the game will be. Because everybody is just going to be putting out their... They're workers. Yeah. Like, there's no way to really scale that in terms of timing. It's yeah, even, just going to be longer. This older box right here I'm looking at, it's 25 minutes per player is what it says. And that, mm. it, it's right. The, the more players, the longer it's going to be. 25 minutes per player. That's what it says. That's... We play this very. We're slow. We're slow. Yeah. I, I maybe I guess it's. I guess we're just slow. It's a nice but it thing. gives us real. Uh, it gives me a real analysis process. Really mm -hmm. bad, <laughs> because you, there are a lot of decisions that you can make all the time, um, and you want to be strategic. And there's a trickle down effect when you make these decisions. So it's a tough game. It really is. Yeah, two players. I, I find myself, uh, especially with the bidding aspect. It's like, okay, I'll bid this much, uh, dude. You, you outdid me. <laughs> okay, well, I have this much left, so I guess I got to commit this much here. Yeah. Oh, no, you still outdid me there. And it's like, oh, it's just so frustrating. It's but frustrating. At four players, it's like, well, there's this one column. Yeah. So I'm going to put my bid out on this mm -hmm. one, and then let's see what you guys all do. And then mm -hmm. if it gets back around to me and I can survive it, I can make an educated decision. At the lower player counts, it's like... I got to really put out a big bid to scare everybody off of this thing. Mm -hmm. But it's like now I don't have enough money to put out my other workers uh, to go do something uh, for that other column. So, mm. yeah, it's uh, for me, it's it's a little bit more frustrating at two at the lower player counts compared to the higher player counts. But as frustrating as the game is, I don't know about you. I really, really like this game. I've loved the original. Um, mm. Now they have this new version, which is not this. This is the original. Uh, and they have made some changes. If you're just playing the base game, they have made some changes to it. Mm -hmm. The first thing is some of the artwork is different. I can't tell which one I like better. I think I like the fact that the board isn't super colored. Mm -hmm. Like the, the original board, each action space was delineated by color. And now it's just sort of in the middle instead of the entire thing. I'm trying to remember, is because the, the board here is variable, right? There's like those five yes, rows these, in, these, the, in this one. I don't remember, actually, I don't remember. if it's variable. But these yeah. these panels are variable. So you kind of flip them around and you you just have a different arrangement every time. Yeah. These pretty are, much. These are double sided yes. and you can you can literally move them you mm -hmm. know, from one space to the next. Yes. This board is uh, completely new with the expansion because one side is the scoreboard and the other side has to do with the expansion that it comes with. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful beautiful yeah, I mean, whoever nice. the artist is is really really talented um although our board i don't know if it's just ours but this is a little bit flimsy i feel like it's already starting to break you can see kind of the issues, white line yeah. right there yeah. um and otherwise the other thing is on this side of the board from what i remember the original game had variable yeah, uh these, material these costs tokens, yeah. and now these are not variable i don't know why i like it when things are variable like that yeah so, so like always it'll be brown, three, blue, yeah. that thing. In the original game, there were around. tokens that you tokens. randomized and you placed there. Mm -hmm. uh, the other couple of changes, though, are the way that the first player works. In our game, we took the prestige cards, and then whoever uh, passed first got to gain coins, depending on how many of these they had. Mm -hmm. In the original game, it wasn't like that. You still gained a coin for it, but it didn't sort of stack this way. 
And the other thing, which is probably the biggest difference, is the taking of the artwork. Yep. In the original game, when you take artwork, you take it face, face down, down so that it's random. You don't get to see what you're going to get. And that never made sense. That was yeah. so, so out of your control, right? Yeah, because if it's like yellow, green are out there and you pull a yellow and you're like, can somebody please clear this off? Yeah, because that, <laughs> that rule still applied yeah. in the original game. So that really didn't make any sense. So yeah. I really do like the fact that they they fix that mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, they give us the ability to choose. Now, in terms of the expansion, let's just flip this around so okay. that you yep. can see what it's what it looks like. This is the expansion side of the board and the expansion Bell Epoch. Yeah, I, th I think it's pronounced. Uh, yeah. um, it adds a few things that are sort of minor, but really do change the way that the game feels. The first thing are these tiles that go over here. You have a certain number of them depending on player count. And these are basically end game. So if you're playing a two player game, then you only have three of them. Mm -hmm. And these are kind of strong end game uh, abilities or powers. And the way that you can claim these is you're going to have five of these in the middle in sort of a cross formation, and they're going to stay there the entire game, which means these spaces can never be built on. Mm -hmm. You cannot put a house here. But each time somebody goes here with one of their architects, they have the option to sacrifice uh, an architect that hasn't been placed out onto one of these tiles because these tiles can only be claimed by one person mm -hmm. the entire game. They're kind of like but a little race that meeple is going to be there for the rest of the game, which means you are down one architect. Yeah, you can never recall them. You can never recall them. These do various things. For example, this tile over here will get you three coins uh, multiplied by however far you are up on the iris track. Yep. And that's before you have to pay your nobles. So that's kind of a nice uh, way for you to, to amass a lot of nobles and mm -hmm. not have to worry about paying. And this one, as another example, this one's really strong. It becomes a seventh spot on your architect track mm. so that you can score a maximum of 15 points, which wow. is more than my 12. Can you yeah. imagine for the player who built out all six of their buildings? That would be crushing. Yeah. <laughs> so that is one aspect that it adds. Yeah. The expansion also adds white artwork which is on the back of these and some nobles that will gain you white artwork. Mm -hmm. And when you sell these, you can basically choose a color and sell it at that price. But I think you only get like... I think you get half. You get so, half of the benefits. So if it was like you're saying, oh, this is going to represent yellow, then instead of getting six and six, you're going to get three and three. Right, yeah. In, in addition to the white art pieces, there's also traveler meeples mm -hmm. that are also white that are very temporary when you put them out. You also have another uh, type of building material, which is glass. Glass. <laughs> and that makes it much harder because now you are having to consider glass. And when you go to construct buildings, you can make pavilions. So there's a whole deck of these cards, and you're going to have one on each of these spaces. And when you go to construct a building, you can choose to either construct it the same way by placing it out onto this board, or you can claim one of these spots. Uh, the middle three here require you to also pay glass, so that is another purpose of the glass material. But when you place a building here, you also claim the card. And these do various things. Some of them are really strong, uh, depending on what you're going for. We're not going to go over them now because clearly there's a ton of them. Mm -hmm. But that can change the game quite a bit. And it also adds a new type of uh, scoring criteria for the end of each round. Basically, for the row that you've placed your pavilion in, so say I have built this here, I'm going to score, uh, I believe it's one point for each different colored um, yeah, meeple. Yeah, it's actually listed right below it. So it's, you get one point for every uh, unique meeple color that's yes. out there or ar architect color that's out there. Right. So now when you're placing out your workers, you're thinking like, oh my gosh, somebody who so-and-so has a, yeah. a pavilion so here. Like Do I want to go there? That's... It's it's a uh, it's an, an additional wrinkle in your decision making. Mm -hmm. So that is the basic concept of what the expansion adds. Now uh, we did not include it because one of us doesn't like it that much. <laughs> I, I'm not a fan of it. Um, we have played with it at a couple different player counts now, and I just don't like the I I don't like the <laughs> there's a couple things I don't like. I don't like the glass, first okay. of all. Uh, the glass is just one more thing that you have to manage. Yeah. And like, it's already such a struggle to try to time right. Like, okay, I'm here. Oh no, you did that. Okay, it's fine. I can do that. And like, <laughs> all of a sudden it's like, now it's glass. Okay, I didn't uh, I didn't have I any access have to that now. Glass. <laughs> and then, okay, oh yeah, well then they're gonna do that. And it's like, oh boy. Well now so I can now, only pay glass. I can only pay glass, yeah, yeah. So then it's forcing you to do more of these, uh, the white. Uh -huh. um, I do appreciate the fact that these books are kind of here, and I do like the fact that you can sequester those elements of it that I do like. Yeah. Um, the yeah, fact like that these books that. can be here, and because these are these are the main spots, right? Like with this this mechanism, with uh, 
you're going to most likely feed into the center spaces. So yeah. I do appreciate the fact that it's like, okay, nobody can build on those center on spaces. On these really hot building spots, on the hot, right? Yeah, the hot places that are most likely going to show up when you flip over that stock exchange. So yeah. I do appreciate that. And I do like the idea of, all right, well, if you want something really sweet, you're going to have to lose a worker for the entirety of the yeah, game. Yeah, I like this So that part I, I have, I, I actually appreciate that. Yeah. Um, these parts here, I mean, th this accounts for glass again, so you would have to get glass. If so you glass is get like these. the number one enemy. Your enemy number one with the expansion is this glass yeah, material? Yeah, a, a kind of. And then it's like, so whoever races to this, they, they get their, you know, it's their own personal um, every bonus. round bonus benefit. Depending so, on what it is. Depending on what it is. And then I also don't like it at, uh, at lower player counts. Like at, at a two-player game, like this is less kind of dynamic because yeah. it's like, well, it's either you or me, and then that's kind of it. You, know? Levine, you, don't, you basically don't like the fact that the buildings are not limited to being built here, yes. right? You like the fact that, that it's like, well, you can go to that spot, but you're going to have to land on my building. Yeah. But now that buildings are getting placed onto this board, there's a lot less of that on this main There's board, a lot less right? going on here. So then yeah. there's less of that like choice of like, right. oh, I really need to take that action, but yeah. I'm going to give you a passive benefit. Right, right, right. So there was less buildings just straight up being, being put here because... Yes. And some of our plays, people were just rushing to these. Yeah. And so that that's why I don't really like it. I yeah, I agree with that part. Uh, I do think that it's more fun when the, all the buildings are limited to the Art Nouveau board. I like the expansion more than you do, definitely. I don't mind playing with it. Mm. But I agree that it makes an already tight game even tighter, which makes it more frustrating. Like the base game is already frustrating, depending on who you're playing with and how tactical the game becomes. Mm -hmm. But with this expansion, it becomes even tighter. And just the possibilities for getting a really powerful card that really feeds into your strategy is pretty high. Um, my favorite part of the expansion is in these end game scoring things because it does leave you with this decision of do I go towards what these things are benefiting mm -hmm. uh, but also sacrifice a worker or and, and when do I do when, that like the timing yeah, the of because really what if good. more than one person is going for this then I, I have to try to do it first right yep. so I do like this aspect but yes the glass is very frustrating so anyway that's about it I still welcome the changes to the base game in the new version of the game mm -hmm. even if we don't play with the expansion but uh, Brussels is a game that we've already known uh, yeah. this is a game that, that has been in our collection like i said for a very long time because i i really really enjoy it how about you yeah no i, I still i still really really like this game all these years later uh it was nice because i hadn't played it for a long time mm -hmm. and then i played it at a local convention of uh, last year mm -hmm. and then it reignited because we played a full five player then yeah. and i was like wow this is a really good game it's so, really good um the base game it's so good yeah it, it was, really is it was a really tight game everybody was in it everybody was vying for victory nobody was like left behind and yeah that, that felt really good in a five-player game and it also feels very unique you know we have a lot of worker placement games there are a lot of euro games but the combination of those three main things the bidding the worker placement and the area majority yeah. is just such a unique fascinating puzzle very frustrating but so so satisfying yeah. unless you lose really really bad then it doesn't feel good <laughs> so so anyway, that is Brussels 1893. If you have any questions about anything you saw here, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. We'll try to get back to you. Uh, thank you all so much for watching the video and thank you to our Patreon community for voting on this game. We really appreciate that. And we'll see you all next time. <laughs> thank <Bye>. you. Bye. <laughs>